Right. Now, let's look at the charge and discharge uh, when the voltage is involved on this. So now, let's look at this one. First thing first, there is a 53 volt that is given to us, battery, and there is position A, there is position B, there is selector switch. What I mean by selector switch, it is a switch that is able to move up and down. In other words, which means the switch can be moved from here and then it can be connected to A, or it can also be moved down here and also be connected to B. We call it a selector switch. So it can be moved from here, coming here, and it connects at A, and then the current will start moving on that side. And then we can be moved back here and it will start discharging and stuff. Okay, let's explain the movement of current on this thing. The first question says um, a selector switch is now on point A. Okay. The selector switch, that's what they're saying. They call it a selector switch. And then the selector switch is now on point A. Let me use a black color to draw my selector switch. So my selector switch is being moved. So which means when it connects to point A, current will start moving. And look at this. It won't come here because already there's a short circuit here. So the current will move from there, go to the other side, pass here through the capacitor. And then this is the only direction at which the current is moving, which means in other words, we are going to calculate, first of all, the time constant. Remember the formula for voltage, right now, when the capacitor is charging. Listen, the battery is supplying the capacitor, which means this is a charge. It is only a discharge when the battery is disconnected to the, what? the capacitor. But now, the battery is supplying there, so which means it is charging. Remember, V equals to initial voltage multiplied. When it is charging, I said you include the minus one, right? And then it's going to be minus time all over the time constant, which is RC, right? We make that a little bit bigger for you to see. So now remember that. Okay. On the first case, they gave us, on the first case where it is charging, they gave us that the time is equals to 10 milliseconds. So milliseconds is the same as times 10 to the power negative 3, right? So this is what we have, which means we have time, but we don't have the time constant. How do we get the time constant? Remember, time constant says is equal to what? It's equal to RC, right? So which means when we look here, how many resistors do we have on this connected part of the circuit? We only have R2 connected to us, right? So if R2 is connected to that, then which means we're going to use what? 130 as the resistor that we have, which is uh, uh, the first resistor and the capacitor. So which means we lose the equivalent resistance and we only have one resistor that's 120. So it's going to be, what is the equivalent resistance? 130, right? Multiplied by what is the capacitor? 100 multiplied by 10 to the power negative 6 because it's a micro -fight. When What do we get for our time constant? We'll get that our time constant is going to be 0 0.013 uh, second, milliseconds. Second. Or oh, it's in seconds, right? So now that we have this, right? Our time constant. We can come and substitute here. Remember, we have the initial voltage, which is the one that is being supplied by what? By the battery. So we are simply going to substitute our formula here. We have time, we have time constant, and we have that. So, so now that we, we have the time constant, we can simply get the voltage at which the capacitor will charge up to. So V is equal to, what is the initial voltage? The initial voltage is the voltage of the battery, right? Now. The battery has a voltage of what? Of 53 volts. That's the initial voltage that we're going to use there. So we're going to come direct here and simply put our 53 as our initial voltage. Multiplied by 1 minus, remember it is our capacitor is charging, minus. Do we have time? Yes, the time is given, which is 10 milliseconds, which is the same as 10 times 10 to the power negative 3 divided by. Do we have the time constant? Because RC is the same as time constant, right? So which means we are going to substitute our time constant there, which is 0 0.013. And then we simply close it. So when we put this in a calculator, we are going to get that our answer is the same as 28.44 volts. So now this is the voltage at which the capacitor has charged up to. And this is the answer. Now, we know that our capacitor has a, vo a 
a charge of what it has charged up to 28.44 volts right which means this is the voltage on the capacitor remember we know that a, a capacitor is the device that stores what charge but on case b they say to us now the selector switch is moved from point a to point b which means the selector switch is now moved from this point and is now coming to this point now so when the selector switch is now on this point remember it is it is now cutting off the current that comes from the battery which means in other words the capacitor is no longer charging right now. so now the capacitor now acts as a battery which means it is now the one that is now supplying so let me use a different color so do you see that so now the capacitor will now act as a battery because it is now starting to discharge releasing that charge so it means the charge will only move to that part it won't go to the other part because of an open switch right now of an open circuit that is the through like the short circuited so the voltage will only move and then the capacitor will start discharging up to a certain time but now they told us that it will discharge for 12 milliseconds they've given us time they said the time is let me use a black one they gave us time and they said the time that will take the capacitor to discharge is 12 milliseconds right milliseconds it simply means time 10 to the power negative 3 Remember that. So they've given us time, right? And then remember, when the capacitor is discharging, I said you get rid of the what? Of the negative one. So the formula will be equal to V, V initial, multiplied by E, negative time all over RC. This is what we have, right? Remember, it is now discharging. Why am I saying that? Because there's no supply that is happening. It's now, it is now the capacitor acting as a battery, releasing charge to the resistors. But look at the resistor now. There is this resistor involved and there is that resistor involved and they are now in series do you see that now which means our rc will change which means in other words our time constant will be the sum of these two resistors do you see they're in series and then it's going to be what it's going to be 130 which is the first resistor okay let me just write it to be fair it's going to be r1 plus r2 right which is my equivalent r right now because remember, time constant is the same as R times C. What is the C that is there? Which is um, the equivalent resistance of the what? Of the capacitor. Obviously, there's only one capacitor. It's going to be 100. Let's substitute. This is R1 is equal to 100. R2 is equal to 130. So when we add the two, they're going to give me what? They're going to give me 230. Multiplied by 100 microfarad. So I will get that my time constant there will be equals to um, 0 0.0, 0 0.023 seconds. So now that I have my time constant right now in seconds, now I can come here, substitute the time constant that I have. But now, since the voltage that is being supplied is being supplied by the capacitor, and remember, the capacitor only charged up to 28.44 volts. Which means the initial voltage will be the one that comes from the capacitor. Because the capacitor was charged by the battery and it became 28.44 volts. So when the selector came down here, this 28.44 volts will now be released to all these two resistors. Which means our initial voltage will be 28.44 volts. Then we are going to come here, we are going to say V is equal to. So when there is initial there, we are going to use the, the, the charge of the capacitor there. The voltage with the capacitor which is going to be 28.44 right on this one and then we are going to simply say e remember the reason why we are not putting a minus one is because the capacitor is what is discharging and they've already given us the time at which the capacitor will last when it is discharging we need to know the amount of voltage will, that will be left after 12 milliseconds so it's going to be the 12 milliseconds the same time 10 to the power negative 3 divided by what is the rc we already have our rc which is 0 0.023 right and then when we punch this on a calculator we will find that our, our our capacitor will only discharge and will be left with a voltage of 16.88 volts so now this voltage is the voltage that is left after the capacitor has discharged for 12 milliseconds and this will be the voltage that is left there so this is the final answer for the second part Right.
Now, the last question that we're going to focus on on the same circuit, they are going to ask us, they asked us the energy stored on the capacitor now. So, which means we are going, we already have the last answer, remember, right? Uh, where the, the, the energy that is left on the capacitor. So, we, we are only left with this type of voltage. So, remember the formula for energy stored is equals to E is equals to half, right? Uh, C V squared. Remember to put the square there when you're doing it. So now, remember, this is the capacitance of the capacitor, right? So we simply go there. So the capacitor only discharged for 12 milliseconds. And the only voltage that was left is this, which means that's the energy that is stored after the capacitor is discharged for that amount of time. So it's going to be half. What is the capacitor, by the way? The capacitor is going to be 100 microfarad that will really given us, which is the same as 100 times 10 to the power negative 6 multiplied by V, the V we are going to use is the one where the capacitor is discharged and a certain voltage was left there. So it's going to be 16.88, but we are going to put it squared. So remember, it's just a continuation because of that. So now, the energy that's stored, uh, when we put this on a calculator, we are going to find that it's going to be 0 0.014 joules. And this is the final answer of the energy stored and that's how you do those circuits let's first start by analyzing um, this formula most important i mean this uh, graph the most important thing is so uh, the first thing before you can analyze it is to check the value that is given here if it is given i a that means that's a current remember the topest part of the graph it's called the peak let me write it in bold so that you can see it it's called the peak Right? So that's the highest part of the graph, which means um, that 10 is what we call the peak current. Do you see that? So if this is also the peak, but they call it the trough because it's on the negative side, but it's also the highest part, but on the negative side. You get it? So now, so which means what is given to us here, it is actually the peak current, since the value that is given to us here is the current. Remember the formula that we have here, it says, um, peak current, which is um, I peak, right, which is the topest value, equals to the square root of 2 multiplied by I RMS, right? This is what we have. So the question there, remember, you need to understand this. Uh, by, by getting this, by, by, by this graph that is given to us, they've already given us what the peak current is. So we know that our peak current is the topest value, which is equals to what? Which is equals to 10. Which means wherever there is I peak, we're going to put what? 10 amperes. So which means it's going to be 10 here. Multiplied by, remember, very important, the root of 2 multiplied by I R M S. So the question there um, is actually asking us to calculate for the what? For the I R M S. Which means for me to get the I R M S, I'll simply divide there by the root of 2 and also divide there by the root of 2. Then the answer that I'm going to get there, it is my I R M S. So my I R M S is the simple as 10 to the power of root of 2, which means the answer there, my I R M S, can be simplified to 7.07 .07 amperes. So now that I have my I R M S, remember that we also have the second formula that looks a bit similar to this one, but this one is all, always about voltage, right? Yeah. Right. The second formula that we're going to focus on is the peak voltage, right? So, so the peak voltage is similar to what is happening there. Square root of 2 multiplied the V RMS, right? On that question, we are given that our peak voltage, right? Our, our peak voltage, um, our, our V RMS, sorry, it's given as 120 volts. If they gave you a voltage and they don't mention that that's what, that's a peak voltage, it's actually um, VRMS, right? So they just say a voltage of 120 and 60 hertz. That's what they gave to you when you go to a guide and you see a graph like this one. So remember that that V that is given to you, if they don't mention that it's peak, it's actually RMS, right? So which means in other words, you are going to come here and you calculate your peak, which means you're going to say what? V peak will be equals to the square root of 2 multiplied by 120. And then when you multiply that, you are going to get that the V peak will be equal to 1 
uh, 67.71 volts and that will be the answer there all right guys now we are going to look at this equation and we are trying to simplify it and see what's really going on let's simplify the concept and then um, make sure that we get what each of these really mean we know that this represents the peak current right and then here 314 is the same as the sine of w right which is angular t so which means 314 because you already have the t right? do you see that 314 is the same as w and remember w which is angular is equals to 2 pi f right so right. from that question we can be able to get what uh, our frequency is equals to right now. so how do we calculate the frequency here we already have w and w is what is 314 so which means wherever there is w we're going to simply substitute by what by 3 1 4 which is equals to 2 pi f and then simply for us to get our frequency we simply divide by what by 2 pi and we come here again we divide by what by 2 pi this will cancel this then our frequency there will be given as uh, 60 50 or oh, it's 50 so there 50 hertz right the same equation remember uh, this is the same equation that is there the same equation can be written in the form of voltage right so which means voltage is equals to v peak right which is the peak voltage and then it's going to be the sine of angular t right and then we're going to simplify this again and uh, try and get what our answers is going to be um, okay we know that power is equals to v rms multiplied by i rms we already have our v rms which is 120 we already have our i rms which is 0 0.5 so now what is our power there our power is equals to 120 volts multiplied by 0 0.5 and then we will get our power as uh, 